Hello. So as part of my um, learning as far as that goes, I started reading a book called Mad in America. Um, the book is about mental health treatment throughout the years. It's like a history. It starts with before Bedlam and keeps going. It takes a very conversational style. Um, so it seems like you're having a conversation about it and discussing people's, um, that actually went through it, what they went through in a way that could hit a little bit harder than just having the plain facts. But I still think having the videos is actually more of an impact of seeing where we were with mental health and where we are now. Um, the quote, the book does have a few quotes that I really like. So hold on one second. Okay, I'm back. So the book is Mad in America by Robert Whit Whitaker. It says, bad science, bad medicine, and the enduring mistreatment of the mentally ill. So, like, one of the first quotes in the book is, we are still mad about the mad. We still don't understand them, and that lack of understanding makes us mean and arrogant, and makes us mislead mislead ourselves, and so we hurt them. David Cohen. So it's broken into different parts. It starts with the original Bedlam, um, the darkest era from the 1990s to the 1950s. Um, and then part three, back to Bedlam, 1950s to 1990s. Part four, Mad Medicine Today. And it talks about what medicine there is today. So... Um, there were some things I was going to mention, but I they feel like it was, a lot of this could be done better through videos and show the history and the treatment and everything that um, we have to work on, really, as a society. So, another one of the quotes is, Terror acts powerfully upon the body, though the medium of the mind, through the medium of the mind, and should be employed in the cure of madness. Benjamin Rush. Another one that was mentioned um, is, if there is any secret in the management of the insane, it is this. Respect them and they will respect themselves. Treat them as they reasonable beings and they will take every possible pain to show that they are such. Give them your confidence and they will rightly appreciate it and rarely abuse it. Samuel Little Woodward. Um... And uh, then there's, we do not, we, do, why do we preserve these useful and harmful beings? The abnormal prevent the development of the normal. This fact must be squarely faced. Why should society not dispose of the criminally in, insane in a more economical manner? Dr. Alexis um, Carroll. So I really enjoy this book. I'm not finished with it yet. Um, this one is by uh, The Patient's Reality. It's chapter geez, seven in part three. The quote says, the drugs I had taken for many months affected every part of my body. My eyes keep going out of my focus, especially when I tried to read. My mouth was dry, my tongue swollen, my words slurred. Sometimes I forgot what I was trying to say. My body was puffy. I hadn't menstruated in months and was able to move my bowels only with enormous amounts of laxatives. I had no energy at all. If walking around in a constant haze is supposed to be tranquility, I was successfully tranquilized. So that was just an idea of what people go th were going through. I decided that um, instead of doing a chapter by chapter read of this book, um, I was just going to look at a few different documentaries with similar information because I feel like that would show it better. Um, so I found some on YouTube and I'm going to start with one that I really liked from college called Any Place By Here. But anyway, thanks for watching.
Goodbye, Jenny. Goodbye. What? Where are you going? Where are you going, Carl? I'm leaving. Give me a kiss. Where are you going? I'm going to a hotel. Hotel? Yeah. Lots of luck, Carl. Okay. Lots of luck. For more than a hundred years, we've kept the mentally sick locked up and hidden away, where we won't have to experience their suffering. That's all changing. Mental hospitals in the United States have emptied their wards by two-thirds, releasing all but the most seriously ill to come back and live among us. Do you think that you can cope outside? Oh, definitely. What would it I take? didn't think at first that I could cope in here. <laughs> And if you can cope with this, you can uh, cope with anything. This broadcast is about Eddie, Elaine, Harvey, and a few others, people who are trying to cope with life on a mental ward and the choices they face when leaving for a new life on the outside. Consistently, for the past couple of weeks, you've been coming in here and explaining to me that you feel it's unfair no one is doing anything about your discharge. Exactly. I mean, I want to go back to my parents. I know, I know that would never happen as long as I live, and that's what's hurting me. But for God's sake, you understand my point. I've been so goddamn hell. <laughs> It's a cruel, lonely illness. Creedmoor Psychiatric Center, a New York State mental institution. A few years ago, almost 8,000 patients were crowded in here. Now only 1,800. It's what's happening in mental hospitals all over America. A presidential commission warns us that long-term hospitalization makes patients sicker, causes permanent debilitation. That treatment in the community offers better hope but that neighborhood mental health programs are all too few and are being starved in their infancy. That thousands of patients have been released to communities where they're not wanted. That too many return to the hospitals because of insufficient care and support. And that a growing number of us, perhaps 15%, are in need of mental care. Is this home for you? Home for me in the daytime. Thank you. What is this? Uh, this is the activity side. How long have you been here? I've been here since 1974. <laughs> I've been discharged in 75 and came back. How did you feel coming back? Bad. Very bad. Oh, wonderful. Uh, having a group. I was hoping you would have a group. This is our lovable daughter, Seven. Is it, the, is it the cooking room? They make my like, breakfasts every morning and the group starts about 10. And it's over, I would say, 10, 30, a quarter to 11. And they, they wash their hands, they make the food, they, cook, they eat it, then they wash up and then they leave the group. And here's where they have the woodwork right behind here. And this is our lovable Mrs. McCauley. You know, it takes a lot to run this country, and this is the greatest country that there ever was. God created this country. He split the whole world up, and he said, here I'm putting the United States, here I'm putting Canada, and I need to sleep every once in a while, I need a siesta, so I put Mexico, South America, take it away. What are you doing? Anything I feel like I'm creating something. I don't like, I like to create, I don't like to tear down. Well, what we got, we got to do with, and we got to improvise, and we got to, we got to someday, we got to knock all the slums down and 
kill the rats and the rabbits. Not the rabbits. If it wasn't for the rabbits, well, some human beings are like rabbits, aren't they? They like carrots, but uh, sometimes they cook the carrots, and that takes all the vitamins out of them, you know? And uh, it reminds me of an old song. He made the night a little brighter wherever he did go. That old lamp lighter of the Why they call a uh, run in a stocking or run? No. Because they got to run to the store and get another pair. <laughs> hey, come here, Pupsy. Come here. Hey, what are you going to do when you get out of here? Well, go to Fountain House, get a job, live at Central Manor. Oh, I live normally again. You can do it, too. I know you can. Yeah. All you need is the courage. Yeah. Good luck, Elaine. Yeah, thank you. I'm a little nervous, but I, I'm th Good I think luck. I'm going to make it this time. You need something to hang that around your neck. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> the woman who died off at the door, Joanne Moore, she's the treatment team leader. Tell me about this place from your standpoint. You see a lot coming back. Well, there are enough patients that do return because of their medication problems or because the supports in the community are not sufficient enough for them. Does that discourage you? No. You just keep on? Yeah. It's better for them to be asked for a little while than to just be in here continuously. Really, even if people only last six months out and then come back, it's still far better. Why is that? To be asked. Because... After you're here a long time, you really can become very institutionalized. And at least if you have breaks by going out to the community, that stops that process. When you say become institutionalized, what do you mean? You become very dependent on the hospital, dependent on other people preparing your meals, on opening doors, on making your bed, on having a, a regime of when you go to the bathroom and when you eat and things like that. And that's, that makes you Just very institutionalized. one more hypothetical question. One more, one more hypothetical question. If Jesus Christ was black, would they let him into the unions? Okay. Uh, right over here we have quiet room. It's really called a club, but they call it quiet. We have two of them. <clears throat> but it's used for it is this. Um, if a patient gets violent or upset, first they took the stair, tries to talk them to calm them down. If that done with the force to give them a needle and lock them up in here until they calm down. Once the steer feels are calmed down enough to come out, then they open the door and they let them out. But if they act up again, then they just go right back in. There's nothing in there. Exactly. <laughs> Thanks. Looks very nice. You know the TV you saw in Joanne? Is they have a TV in the male dormitory and a TV in the female dormitory. No females are allowed in the men's dormitory and no men are allowed in the female dormitory. But who in the hell listens to orders? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, that's the same inside and outside. <laughs> <laughs> All right, come here. Do you ever get to the feeling I just got to get out of here. Yeah. Very often. Very often. Where do you feel you really belong? In here or outside? Outside, definitely. The staff, the staff still feels I'm, I'm not ready for a discharge. That's another thing that really gets me mad. Because, uh, I mean, I should, I should be the first one to know when I'm ready to leave. But I should know how I feel. I feel I'm ready. I, in fact, I feel I'm ready to leave today. But the fact is, I have no place to go. One of the things we hear is that when people like you leave, a lot of people mistreat them, you know, yeah. say things and make it hard on you. How are they going to know I'm, how, how is it, I look at it this way. How is the people on the outside going to know if I'm, that I'm a patient in cream or unless I advertise or unless I start acting crazy? I act perfectly normal on the outside. 
Well, you do in here, too, as far as I can tell. You don't know me that well, Bill. Macaroni and cheese. Uh, yeah, I like it. Are you going to eat? Yes. Yeah. Oh, good. With you. Beautiful. I'm honored. Yes, Greg. I'm not going to taste too sweet, huh? Okay, here. But I'd like to know, yeah. as, as the director of the hospital, how you expect somebody to get well under these conditions? I think that when you bunch chronic and acute patients together, when you bunch women and men together, it's just the the issue of women and men together. I think is a very healthy issue. Uh, I think if you se segregate the sexes in institutions, what you get is uh, institutional homosexuality, which is sometimes counterproductive. Uh, I think that the crowding is a problem. I think everybody should have their privacy, and these are things that we'd like to do. I was talking about men and women using the same bathroom, yeah. using the same shower. I find it downright degrading, and I also find it. It's, uh, it makes me have other problems aside from what I came for. Well, I can understand that. You see, I have certain restraints I have to work under. I have a certain budget I have to work under, certain regulations, and sometimes those impede uh, improving the facility. I can't even talk to you if you let this go on. I mean, you, I have to sit here. The first day I came here with people grabbing my food off my tray, with people That's taking their clothing off in the dining room. In the room. dining room in front of everybody. And it's not the staff's fault. No, we have a they have, they're, they're too light staff. Store. But uh, there were there's, uh, far too many patients yep. and far too little staff. Yep. And you, you're yelling budget. I'm yelling that it's a criminal act because if I'd get hurt here, you'd have a class action suit that would make you hear. But it would be thrown out of court or, or settled before. They can no longer say that they're, they're not aware of the, problem, I mean, of the problem here. I'm making you aware. Do you know, do you know, aware excuse me, sir. Do you know what motel is spelled backwards? No, sir. Let him. I always feel like I'm being strangled slowly. Uh, you know, it's like a very exquisite form of torture. Your, your funds are, are ju just trickle in so that you can barely manage to run the institution and keep your head above water. And you always feel like you're just fighting for air and that you just about can breathe. It's, it's, it's really scary even. It's, it's, it's not, only, not just a frustration, it's a fear that you have. Nobody can know, possibly know, the despair of coming into a place like this except a parent or a relative who has somebody here. But if you didn't or have this friend. place, what would you have? I would have nothing. And I'll tell you something. The day that I had to walk in here and walk into that Building 39 and leave him here, I will never forget it. Never forget it. All I hear is budgets. Budget is not important. My son to other people are important. These people need help. They're going to get killed. You know how many assaults they've been there? People have been hurt. People have been almost There was killed. a lovely young fella here just re not too many months ago that Dr. Weiner knows of, and he killed another patient. And it's very sad, all because there wasn't enough staff. Even when they have a few, they're not doing their work. They have drunks here as attendants. They have alcoholics here, and I've seen them drunk. These are very serious charges. These are very serious. I'll back but them I, up. You, you, I'm, you sure, I'm sure. At this, I'm, not, I'm sure I'm you sure can. You but I'm sure right at the now. same time, you, you know that there are some very, very, very dedicated, dedicated and I'll good I'll give you names. If you want names of good ones, I can run them all for you. But there's not enough. They have 66 patients on this ward, and they're all running around here. Now, I'm here a lot, Mr. Moyers. I love my son dearly. 19 years he's been here. I've had a daughter that was murdered, too, on the streets of New York. So I've had my share. I want to get action for my boy before I die. Have you had employees about whom there have been complaints such as these whom you were forced to keep? Yes. Yes. Many? Yes. I'd say in the last two years, about ten. Are parents expecting too much Definitely. of you? They expect a whole lot where they will not I disagree. I themselves. disagree. Say, this well, lady my, here, my, in the years I've known Jeff, you know what she did to Jeffrey? She rotted his teeth out. I rotted his teeth out. She brings like him that. multitudes of candy, bags and bags of candies. They come on Sundays with these big bags. They think they never eat. They stuff them, stuff them, stuff them. She can tell you. What, do you, what does that say to you, Mrs. Taylor? 
What did they say? They're putting the weight on us, on us and taking it off themselves. May I speak from a patient's point of view? I'm familiar with most of your children. And to degrade and uh, say hostile remarks towards the little staff that we have is a mistake on your part. Bill, I'm with son. all I'm saying is, Bill, 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 I see... I, I'm not saying this to be Will you wait like a minute? Will wait wait you wait a minute in life? You wait a minute. You are shocked. No. In life. Bill, I see number of times Jeffrey Shapiro will walk in the bathroom. He's perfect. I money yeah, to beat him up real good last week with a shoe. Can you, can you prove it? Oh. All you, all you could do is take your son's word. Jeffrey Shapiro goes in the bathroom, pisses on the floor. One minute, one minute. I would just like to say, your comment that you just made is a perfect example of cruelty. To say to him, why did he go to Mid Hudson at this point? He never is, does anything. He that, never that does anything. That is the point. That's not what he's talking about. Your comment to him at this point in time is precisely what you do to your daughter and will keep her. to perform miracles. No patients we are nothing but babysitters. But we just have a job. We're nothing not but here. babysitters. And we have a job. We're not, not a policeman. We're nothing but babysitters. That's all we are. It's a tough babysitters too. Believe me. Sure. Don't think I don't know in this case. I have a mark right here on my leg. Well, my your son kicked me. Right here. I can show you a mark right. on my eye where your son hit me in my eye with a shoe. That's right. <laughs> For some of these conditions and situations, are there answers? No. Some there aren't today. And that's the hope. The hope is that there'll be answers tomorrow. From where? From better science. But in the meantime? In the meantime, they just got to wait. And that's the frustration you're seeing in these families. Because they've, been, they've heard about so many other people getting better, and they say, why doesn't my kid get better? What are they doing wrong? You know, what, or what am I doing wrong? Which is even more frightening to them. And then what are they doing wrong? And, then, and it may be that nobody's doing anything wrong. But they're, they're just not getting better. And that's sad. I have a famous bottle of milk, grapes, oranges. I had a tuna sandwich and two different types of donuts. Hello, For him. <laughs> I love him so much, Mr. Royer. I would give my life for him. I can't go on vacation. I can't sleep nights. I hear his voice sometimes. I think they heard him. He came home last week. He had a black eye a whole week. One of the attendants beat him up. And uh, they said they didn't see his black eye, but I saw it. I take him home weekends. He gives me a hard time there. I mean, he burns things and my other children don't want him there. And he does wet the floor. His toilet habits are very, very bad. But I blame them because they don't care what they do. He comes home. He isn't even wearing shorts, no underwear, no shorts. I mean, how can a guy close a zipper on his fly or... I mean, he's sick. He can go into a bathroom and do a lot of damage without undershorts under his pants, really. But and my children don't want to know anything of him. Well, I've seen Jeffrey. I really should have been working on him. Your other children don't have anything to do with it? No. No, I only have two left. Only my girl that was murdered, she truly loved him. She used to come. I have one boy at home. He's a teenager, and he doesn't want to put up with him. He doesn't want his friends to see him, man. Good luck to you. Good luck to you. You're a dog. He wants to go with me. I can't, Jeff. I have to go home. Wait a minute. What time is it? I really, I've been here. I've been here most of the day. I lost a whole day's salary. I can't keep hanging around here. I don't want him. He doesn't eat their supper here, right? But you have to eat, Jeff. What do you want? Tomorrow, tomorrow. How much money? You just got. I gave you eight dollars Sunday, right? I need to have a little bit of bread, right? Is he gonna eat? Are you gonna see that he eats? Are you gonna see that he eats? I'll be back tonight. I'll be back, I promise. I never lie to you, do I, darling? I'll be back at 8. You hear? I'm going to make you stay with me. I'll be back at 8 o'clock. Hold this now. I'll be back. And I never lie to you, right? If I ever lie, I'm going home and I'll be back.
Here's the grapes. Don't eat candy, no sweets. Eat that. Wait, darling, I'll see you at 8 o'clock. I'll be back, sweetheart. I never lie, do I? Thank Jeffrey, you. you'll see me at 8, Jeff, okay? okay. Goodbye, on, darling. Oh, look at that. Look what I got waiting for me. Come on, we're going to have coffee. All right. I'll see you. Very bad. Very bad, sex. Yeah. You keep saying yeah, but they, they keep saying... Harvey has been in and out of mental hospitals for almost 10 years. He could be discharged any time, but he has no job, no place to go. There is one chance, an interview for a new program designed to help patients make the transition back to normal life. When you are in transitional services, you are not a patient. You are a resident, you are a client, but not a patient. Uh, you are responsible for taking your own medication. You are responsible for going to your program every day. Uh, the only thing that you have to do is, if you leave the grounds or you're going someplace, you have to tell your counselor where you're going. But you have a key to your room and you can come and go as you please. We expect that you should be able to go through uh, all of our phases within two years or sooner, depending upon you. much different. There's not as much fear. I was scared to death on a ward. All the time. You didn't know what you were up against. Here everybody talks. It's a different thing. It's a whole different thing. And here they try to get them ready so in the event they can have to cook for themselves or something. They can do it. They can budget. They can travel. All these things that you couldn't possibly work on inside a hospital. But I'm free to work on every other problem. And that's good. That feels good. It feels good to wake up in the morning. <laughs> and the first question is not going to have a cigarette. It's good morning. <laughs> another thing. Nobody tells you when to take medication. You're on your own. Responsible for taking them at the proper times. Because when you leave, there's not going to be anybody to tell you when to take medication anyway. You don't shave yourself on the ward in 38. No. They have a barber that comes in and does it. But it cuts you all off. The main therapy of this transitional program is work. Everyone must have a job of some kind, and by 9 a.m., most of the residents are gone. Harvey has a federally funded job as a maintenance man. The residents live on the Creedmoor grounds at first, then graduate to supervise departments in the community. The first test for Harvey is to buy food and prepare a dinner for four people for less than five dollars. A counselor helps the first time. Now I'm getting nervous. You know, yeah. I'm never nervous before the fact, but now I hope I can cook this. You can cook that. Yeah, well, we'll see. Look, I'll be there. You can't go wrong, I'll help you out. Yeah, that's a good part. It's not really the cooking I'm worried about, it's the coastal. Well, the post is going to be easy. Oh, that's, that's going to be the easiest part of it. Huh. Did you check it about the mustard? I've got mustard down there, right? Catch it. I didn't check. Is that camera? What? I've been manic for a long time. I can remember going to school and making people laugh. And on the other hand, I can remember getting very depressed when I wouldn't show up to school. And that's been a pattern with me my whole life. I need to go slowly from a hospital to the community. That I've never been able to do it because I never went to school. Oh, it is a nice head. Look at those leaves. Yeah, but you're not going to use this all the way outside leaves. You're going to start somewhere on the inside. They're, these things so are more they, tough out here than the ones on the inside. How do they look, though? They look good? Yeah, it's all right. Do you used to have 
Why aren't we supposed to? We were supposed to have this weighed. Oh, is that how they do it? You know, your person can be just as scared of getting well as they are of remaining ill. I'm very frightened. Are you sure we didn't make a mistake? No. You know how much it was? What? 304. Yeah. So, so maybe, maybe we should get soda. You don't want the tea? No, I, we were getting the tea because it was the cheapest thing. I do want the tea, don't you, man? They don't want to win, though. This was... I know. You should hang it. See what I'm you washed them, didn't you? My ass? Yeah. Harvey is lucky. Transitional Services is a new and rare program. There's room for only a few, and the waiting list is long. It's the kind of thing mental health planners have long envisioned, but could never get going. While most of the mentally ill in America have been released and now live in our communities, most of the money spent on mental health still goes to the hospitals. Mm-hmm. Very good. Dr. Rice took a little more, but... For the last 10 years, I would look out through those gates, at those bars and these tall buildings, and say, that's where the crazies are. Now, what's wrong with that? Well, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I think you grew up to, to have that bias, I, just as I did, just as everyone else did. I felt the same way. Uh, in my neighborhood, there are people who are no different from the patients here, except that they have an intact family who's caring for them at home. Uh, and nobody has identified them, in quotes, as a crazy. You know, they're strange, peculiar. But they are different. Everybody's different. I'm different. I'm, I, I'm sure you and I have our differences. I, I haven't decided whether I'm psychotic yet. Uh, and somebody else would probably have to decide that. But I'll tell you, if I was... And I, and I may be talking to you in a rather bizarre manner, and your audience may think I'm rather bizarre. But I'm wearing a shirt and a tie, and I shaved this morning, and I look pretty good. So nobody would be afraid of me. They'd say, well, he's an interesting eccentric. If, on the other hand, I was talking to you wearing a ripped T-shirt with my breakfast on it, a pair of chinos with the fly open, you'd be scared of me. And then you'd say, gee, maybe he should be in a mental hospital. Back when I was starting psychiatry, there was no way to manage the aggressive and psychotic behavior of the patients who could, could then be, who were then and could then be very destructive. So they were locked up in here. So they were locked up in here, very often naked in their own excrement. And they had violent buildings uh, where they put all the violent patients and all the violent staff, and those became psychopathic societies. It takes having seen it then and seeing it now to see the dramatic change that's taken place. And, and you don't realize it when you're working here even. Now, my citizens groups, and rightly so, would say, yeah, that's great, but you haven't gone far enough. In fact, once I was waxing uh, about how, what a marvelous job we're doing and how wonderful we all are and everything like that, one of my social workers said, yeah, you're right, Bill, but we're still the cream of the crap. What has made it possible to empty this building? Well, the neuroleptic medications and the community psychiatry movement. We, we saw, you know, we, the neuroleptics were probably the most important. The drugs. Yeah. But, but the community psychiatry movement can't be demeaned in any way. That means getting them out into the community. Yeah. But what it means is that we really saw that we were doing bad things to these people. So your goal is to close this whole huge plant down. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's very important to move the, not only the patients into the community and into clinics and into the voluntary hospitals and places like that, but to move the staff with them. Elaine will be leaving tomorrow morning and she's going to Central Manor. At this point, although she's somewhat nervous, I think that she's really holding herself together a lot better than any other time in the past when she's been discharged. But what she has to know, and she has to understand really clearly, is that if she feels disturbed, she doesn't have to come back here. She really needs to know that because she firmly believes that if something happens and she gets upset, that she's just going to be back here in a minute. They asked me if I wanted to live out in the community, you know. That's the way they word it? Yeah, I told them yes. 
That's, that's what their aim is eventually for you to do. And even if you do come back, even if for some reason you do come back, I wouldn't stay this long no more. I'd get out right away. You that's really what, think so? Yeah, that's what Dr. Fromm told me. I wouldn't stay no three, four years no more. No, so. Because I get too dependent on Miss Taylor, and I get so immune to the place, I don't want to, I don't want to do anything about it anymore. You know? And then my mother gets in that lazy hand, she says, stay there. She's not willing to take me home, you know? Goodbye, Jeffrey. Listen, Jeffrey, you better, you better get well. All right? I lost it. You said a Christmas card, not sending you a holiday card. Okay, okay. Goodbye, Greco. Goodbye, and I hope you get out too, Greco. Goodbye, David. Where's Eddie? Goodbye, Eddie. Goodbye, and call me up, Eddie. You'll get the number from Carolyn, all right? Sure. I'll come out to see you. Yeah, come out on a weekend, but call me before you. I promise I'll come out to see you some weekend. Yeah. As soon as I get the address and the direction, I'll be out. But call me before you come, in case I'm not there. Okay, goodbye. It's a long oh, walk God. out there. You think they'll bring back the best sentence? Well, that's a lot the last mile. And please try to forget the past. Right. That's right. That's why under the bridge. Try to forget the past. Right. There's right. been a lot of bridges made since then. Goodbye. 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 Tiptoe through the tulips. Blood on them, dum da da dee 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 dee. Tiptoe through the tulips with me. Wait, I want to ask you something. Yes. Something I'm known for. Now, Mr. Rich. No, I'm not going to you. So I'll give it to me, but I'll give it to him even. Oh, God. Have a good time. Don't love him. Love your mother. Okay? Here's one. Love your mother and father. No, only your mother. Here's the ring. Only love your mother, darling. Okay, bye bye, Rosa. Take care of yourself. <laughs> Elaine is free, but her choices are few. No family, no job, no friends to welcome her. Ideally, she would be headed for a transitional program or a halfway house in her old neighborhood where she could find help to make the adjustments back to a normal life. But there are no halfway houses in her old neighborhood or just about anywhere else. She is headed for a hotel in the distant community of Far Rockaway, where a few Creedmoor staff members are on hand to provide minimum care. It's either that or a lonely room in a rundown neighborhood somewhere. Elaine will be living in Central Manor, a privately owned hotel built to house former mental patients. In exchange for her $400 monthly federal check, she will get room, food, and medication. Most of the residents are older people, debilitated by the long years of illness and dependency on the wards of New York State mental institutions. More than 2,000 live in the Rockaway community. Well, wh what's the procedure? I mean, um... I think we're both in the dark about it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, what's the procedure? Well, so she has, you have your bags and your clothing with you? Mm. Oh, hi, Maxine. Hi, are you? Dr. Fromm said if you if you have any problems, just call him just about call him. me. Okay. Yes. I don't think we're going to have any problems. No. <laughs> we'll show you where your room is, okay? Yeah. And then you can go into well, the dining room and have lunch. Okay. All right. Mr. Becky, you want to show her her room? I think those are my discharge papers. Okay. Oh, gee, Elaine, you're right on the front. Oh, how beautiful. Oh, yes. Beautiful room. Yeah. Your linen is changed twice a week. Mm. Your towels are changed twice a week. Mm. And all you have to do is take it easy. When 13 you... years ago, I worked as a, as a correspondence clerk. Yeah, did I worked, you like it? Yeah, I worked my way up. I was a file clerk. Really? And then I became a correspondence clerk. I had an important job. I knew the whole filing department. Really? Yeah. The thing was, I had a boyfriend then, and he planned to marry me. Right. And he upset me, and my girlfriend upset me, and her mother upset me, so I had a nervous breakdown, and I had to leave my job. And then I got married to another guy, and yeah. I married him right away, and it didn't work out. So now I just have a mother. 
All right, do you have your social security card with you? I, I'm going to get one made up because I lost the other one. Do you have a Medicare card? No. See, I was in the hospital all this time, and I kept, I just kept getting cash from, from the cash list. I got so much papers in here. One second, please. Right. Elaine can find no programs in Far Rockaway to help her adjust to her new life. So each morning, she must make a two-hour trip to Manhattan's west side. The trip is a difficult daily test of Elaine's will to be on her own. She comes to Manhattan each day because she is a member of a club that for 30 years has been a refuge for former mental patients. Elaine hopes to regain her confidence and skills with the support and friendship of others who have suffered the same fears and loneliness. The club is called Fountain House. There are 1,100 members, a great many of whom have made successful returns to a full-time job and independent living. The members train each other for jobs at New York businesses and department stores. Their work record is exceptional. Want to do table two? Is this busing? Uh, I'm busing and waiting. And uh, would you like to do table one, Elaine? Yeah. OK, fine. <laughs> around the house here with the, along with the staff. You get a sense of Well, it's a reason for me to get up in the morning, you know, it gives me yeah. a place mm -hmm. to go and something to do. And I work and I go home at night and I feel good about myself. There are people here who have faith in me. And I'm learning to have faith in myself. I, these people are beautiful. And if they care about me, well, I must be worth it. And that's really nice. You, are you getting that feeling that these people care? Yes, yes definitely. I've come to the house these past three or four years, and I found a lot of people who cared for me, who always say, hi, Elaine, let's go out, Elaine, or let's have a cup of coffee, Elaine, or let's have lunch, Elaine, or let's just sit around and talk. I found many people like that. These are my friends now. Fountain House. Fountain House friends, yeah. My old friends are all either married or they're working, and they don't bother with me. some of the girls, then I'll eat supper, and I'll smoke my cigarettes, take a shower, you know, then wait for medication. Where do you go, down that way? Yeah, down this way. Well, good luck to you. Thank you. These people coming in here, walking down the street, nobody's going to talk to them. Nobody's going to have anything to do with them. They look like derelicts, most of them. I've walked out there and I've seen them. They sit on the benches. They're pitiful. They come over to you for money. They go around looking in the garbage cans. They gave them this place here to live. And frankly speaking, if go by there and take a look, you your heart breaks. That's what the your heart breaks. Any if this was done in a very stable community, the community might absorb the, or integrate the problem, as you said. But in a community where there are so many other problems, this, I mean, I don't know if you know about the amount of muggings that are going on here now, it's become tremendous. Well, all they have okay. to do is Would put you help them about enough the help in these homes Ill. to help these people. They have to have some taxpayers don't want to pay more money. No, taxpayers are revolting. I didn't say that they, they don't want to pay more money. But what are you going to do with these people when they get old and when they're sick? What are you going to do? What are you going to do with these people then? Just throw them out? What are you going to do with them? You got to do something for them. They got to have some place to stay. They're humans. 
So what are you going to do with them? Do you think it's better for Listen, them? Listen, I'd rather pay tax for a mentally sick person than to pay tax for some people that are on welfare and don't even need it. Right on. They come out of the home, they can come down here, they can sit over here. And what have we got to offer them here? You're saying they simply do not become participating citizens in this community? Definitely not. I don't think they belong in any type of small community that offers them nothing. There is no rehabilitation whatsoever. Coming out of Creedmoor, go, going into uh, uh, a home offers absolutely nothing. It does offer a step. No, I believe it offers, they're taking away the name Creedmoor. That's all. In other words, they can't say, well, now... I moved that. Now, you know... You're the park. 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 This is your beat up isn't it? Well, I have the next pulse and it overlaps here. But they have a problem here. No, how, do you, how do you tell the difference between a mental patient and a drunkard? By your experience on the street. By your experience, because you can tell the people that are patients in all these nursing homes because they're dressed a little better, they conduct themselves a little better. They're, they're a little more intelligent, they give you a little more respect. Are they vulnerable to local talent, as you call it? Certainly, certainly, because uh, uh, they are vulnerable to people like this, because if they have no money all of a sudden, uh, here's a woman behind you. Can you help me? I want to go to Manhattan State Hospital, and they won't let me go, and I can't stand it any longer. I'm sick. I have to go. I where, have where to go live, back. Where do you live, ma'am? Where do you live? In the uh, uh, Central Manor. I can't stand it anymore. Can you come back with me? I could come back with you now, yes. Yeah, come on. Why can't you stand it there anymore? I don't like it. Why? It's making me sick. I can't stand it. Why? I don't like it. That's all I can tell you. What do they do to you? They uh, cheat us all right, but I don't like it. I'll come. All right, I'll come with you. Come on. I'll see you later, Gary. I'll okay. go down to the 1509 with her. All right. Okay? What does she, what does she want? I'm telling you what? what what I was saying. Oh, watch, watch that. What, um, you know, the days and the nights and came for the day. Where did you find her all day? Uh, right next to the park. The park, the park here, the playground, mm -hmm. between uh, the firehouse and the library. Was she acting inappropriate or? Well, uh, she was complaining in general about uh, the conditions here with the people, and uh, she doesn't like the place in general, and she'd like to go back to Manhattan State. That's why I brought her back. Okay? Thank you. This seems like such a nicer place than the hospitals I've seen. I'm gonna go back to the hospital. Mm -hmm. Do you feel better taken care of there? Yes. But don't you give up some freedom yes. to go back? No. How long were you in the hospital? Ten months. Was that the first time? No, I've been in and out of hospitals all my life. Ever since you were a small girl? Yes, I was in Pilgrim State seven years. Do you think you will ever be able to live in a place like this in Rockwell? No. No. Are you going to give up? Stay in the hospital. Well, good luck to you. Thank you. Hi. Hi. This is Elaine. Doctor from. Hi. Hi. How you doing? Oh, I'm fine. Been hearing not the best about you. What are these stories about? What stories? I don't know that you are not acting so good. Is that true? 
Oh, I just hit this woman Gussie over the head. I was thinking of Monroe Smith. Why were you thinking of Monroe Smith? I don't know. It just came to my mind. Really? Oh. We have Coke, George Coke. And, um, we have tuna fish sandwich. Let me have tuna fish on rye. You really do believe this is best for them? Absolutely. When I get crazy, I do not want to be crazy locked up in Creedmoor on a ward where I can't get out of the ward or the door or anything else. I want to get crazy in a place where I got a two-bedroom room, carpet on the floor, uh, air conditioning, where I can walk out the doorway, where I can walk onto the boardwalk, where I can be as bizarre as I want, just like anybody else in this community can be, and where I'm not going to get locked up unless I commit a crime. But if I'm not crazy, I don't want you living next door to me. That's your problem. Should I not want you next to me? I don't, yes, you should not want me next to, to you because you've been brought up to think that way and because I'm not going to convince you otherwise for the next 50 to 100 years. Yes, you should. In the next 50 to 100 years, when a lot of people suffer because of that misunderstanding and those stereotypes? Yep. But I'm, I'm, what, I'm just telling it like it is, Bill. I, I just don't think that uh, we're all of us at a state, at a state in, our, in our education where we can easily accept the things I'm talking about. I think that's a reality. Oh, watch your mouth. And I didn't even know the store was open. I didn't know. Can I get something? Who would you like to have? Oh, Mabel, Mabel to the rescue. <laughs> okay, we'll have to get the key. What do you want? I just, oh, uh, I just want a box of those cheese crackers. Okay, we'll have to get the key, okay? Okay. Eddie has lived in places like Creedmoor since he was seven years old. Now he's 23. He knows he's getting close to the moment when his years in the institution will make him chronic, helpless. He's tried to gain his release, but no program or hotel has accepted him. And so he must wait. Wait in an institution now considered obsolete, costly, ineffective, and dangerous. Wait while alternative community programs are proposed, debated, and forgotten. Eddie is not alone. Millions of Americans, inside and out of the mental institutions, share his dilemma and wait. For CBS Reports, I'm Bill Moyers. Since we completed filming at Creedmoor, Eddie became one of the lucky ones. On October 18th, after months of waiting, he was accepted into transitional services and left the ward. Like On Labor Day weekend, Dr. Bill Werner suffered a heart attack and died. He was a courageous, unorthodox bureaucrat. He really cared, and he fought to take mental health care to the communities where his people lived. When we asked him to film at Creedmoor, he literally gave us keys to the place and allowed us to move at will. He wanted us to see them as he saw them, ordinary people with an illness that can be helped if only there is understanding from the world around them. They need what all of us need, he told me, a job to do, money to spend, a place to live, and somebody to care whether they live or die. Hell, he said, what's so crazy about that? All right, let's go over here. Richard? What do you want me to do? Albert, could you just stop a second? Yeah. Why don't we decide on a theme for this mural? All right, let's try and make a decision. Okay? A theme? Yeah. That Why not over... freedom? <laughs> freedom of choice. Freedom of speech. Freedom, freedom of, of habit. <laughs> habitat. Do you have Does anyone one? second you like the motion? Nice do you... Epitaph on your grave when you go? No. I, I think like I like, like a nice epitaph. And God's care I want. How about a calendar? A calendar? We already have a calendar. La-da-da-da-dee-dee-dee-dee-dee-dum. 
La 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 dee da dum. It had to be me, wonderful me. Had to be me. Hello. Um. So, this is the end of the video. Hello. Um, don't um, forget to so, like and subscribe. This is the end um, of the video. It helps. Um, maybe. Don't basically. forget to like and subscribe. Um, I make these videos for myself, um, but it helps, helps knowing that if maybe. somebody else likes it. So, um, I make these videos for myself, but it helps knowing that if somebody else liked it. So, thanks for watching.